On the border that is situated between Austria and Hungary is a unique and natural space, the Neusiedler Sea, and it is located within a region that has much to offer. The Hungarian name of the lake, Fertel Tu, or swamp, indicates the typical swamp and reed areas that surround the Neusiedler Sea. Our journey around the lake begins on the eastern banks on the Austrian side, in Apetlon, a village in the Seewinkel area that is situated within the national park. In common with most of the region's lakeside villages, Apetlon is full of history. It was first mentioned in 1318. A speciality of the Seewinkel area are the 40 or so different larken, small, less than one meter deep ponds which contain salt, in the summer months, they dry out. The Langerlacker is the largest and most famous salt lake in the Bergenlandischen Seewinkel. The tiny ponds originated in the last major ice age when huge layers of ice left basins in the Earth's surface. They are actually older than the Neusiedler Sea itself. The Neusiedler Sea's littoral zones are of special interest with a unique biotope. Much animal and plant life is at home in this area. However, these magnificent habitats have been threatened due to various dehydration processes applied by man. Indeed, they were beginning to create a desertification of the Seewinkel region. So today, the 40 salt lakes of this area are protected and have become an important part of the Neusiedler Sea Seewinkel National Park. The conservation of nature was already in place here during the first half of the 20th century when various scientists recognized the special value of this wonderful area. In 1954, the first biological station was established in the reed zone of the Neusiedler Sea. Today, the large variety of natural wonders here not only fascinates scientists, but also attracts visitors from all over the world. Right up until the inauguration of the National Park in 1992, its numerous protected areas had been further extended and integrated. Today, the park provides a habitat for more than 320 species of bird, 120 of which also breed in this region. The Neusiedler Sea and its rich variety of wildlife has greatly benefited from its special geographical location between Austria and Hungary. During the Cold War, large sections of this area were used for military purposes. However, the landscape around the lake, including its large meadows, remained untouched, so the indigenous flora was able to flourish. A few kilometers southeast of the lake, on the Hungarian side, is the sleepy village of Fertut, whose name originated from the lake's Hungarian name. Although Fertut contains some beautiful architecture, its main attraction lies outside the village.
The Rococo castle of the former Hungarian Prince Esterházy was first built as a modest hunting lodge. However, inspired by a trip to Versailles in 1764, Prince Nicolas ordered that the complex be completely rebuilt. Almost 50 years passed until construction work of the new residence of the Hungarian sovereign's family was completed. Today, the middle section of Esterházy Castle contains a museum and concert hall. At the end of the 18th century, the Esterházy's court composer and one of the founders of the Wiener Classic, Josef Haydn, enjoyed the many comforts of this castle. Numerous statues demonstrate the skill of the former stonemasons. It was mainly the Kaiser Steinbrucher masters who did most of the work. Viennese court master builders Melchior Heffeler and Ferdinand Mödelhammer created at the Neusiedler See a new and smaller version of Versailles. And the castle also resembles a fine building once inhabited by the Austrian monarchy, Vienna's famous Schönbrunn Castle. Close to the large estates that were located in the neighborhood of Castle Esterházy are pastures for the region's large herds of grey cattle that have been here for several centuries. This old and hardy species was not only used for its meat, but also as a beast of burden. However, with the advent of modern times and new farming methods, these creatures vanished from the stables of this farming area. There have been settlements here for 8,000 years as established by various archaeological finds. Later, while occupied by the Romans, the Neusiedlersi was mentioned for the first time in written form. The Romans cut down the oak forests in the Seewinkel area and created numerous steps. In the early Middle Ages, it was mainly the East Goths who lived here in many small settlements around the Neusiedler Sea. In the course of time, the East Goths gave way to the Avaris, Franks, Slavs, and finally to a former nomadic people, the Magyaris. In the small village of Fertobots from the Glorieta, there's a wonderful view across the surrounding picturesque landscape. This Glorieta in Fertobots, that, as with all its Glorietas, is located on an elevated point, dates back to 1801. There is no other vantage point that offers such a fantastic view of the Neusiedler Sea, and that at the same time is also an architectural masterpiece. Storks have always been part of this captivating landscape. The young are particularly fascinating. Storks live in each area of the lake. 
Here, amid this rural idyll, these birds have found a safe refuge that is important for their survival. The storks not only have a good supply of food here, but also the ideal habitat for their young. The Neusiedlersee Sea has a unique charm, with splendid meadows and small woods that are the remains of huge oak forests that once covered large areas of this region. Unspoiled landscapes as far as the eye can see. It's hardly surprising that the lake and its surroundings are now a popular tourist destination. The village of Balf boasts some interesting features, such as its mountain church that dates back to the 13th century. It is dedicated to patron saint St. Wolfgang and is surrounded by a sturdy graveyard wall. It was built as a defense from the Turks, which is why it's also known as the Castle Church. On the gently sloping hills around the village at the edge of the Neusiedler Sea, vines have been cultivated successfully for hundreds of years. Just as important for local farmers as the cultivation of vines was the use of a reed zone for agriculture. Around 10% of the area continues to be farmed today. The reeds were an important source of building material. Today, the reed is mainly used as a roofing material. While strolling through the Hungarian section of the Neusiedler Sea National Park, the majestic beauty of the area's many storks is plain to see. The park's special climate and geology favor extraordinary and colorful plant life. In early summer, the lake, along with the ocean of blossom on its shores, is a spectacular sight. The park's swampy meadows provide the ideal habitat for the storks that come to Seewinkel each year in April and May, all the way from South Africa. Some breed in natural habitats, while others breed within village chimneys. Everywhere they feel at home. Most species of stork favor elevated nesting sites. Storks are also at home in the village of Fetorakos that lies on the Austrian-Hungarian border and has a population of around 200. The village was first referred to in written form as Rakos in 1199. The small settlement fast became a fortified village. The picturesque atmosphere and dreamy character of the village is highlighted by splendid architecture such as the Bishop's Palace. This elegant building dates back to the early part of the 18th century. Close to the center of the village are some high and mysterious looking rock walls. The remains of the former stone pit of Fertorakos. Today the rock walls also serve as a cave theater. With its own special ambience, the theater can seat an audience of 700.
Thanks to growing tourism, in recent years, Fyodorakos has enjoyed much renovation. It's most rewarding to travel across the border from Hungary to Austria by a boat that plies several times a day between Fertorakos and Mobisch. The journey time across the largest Endoraic lake in Central Europe takes only half an hour, yet both villages are only three kilometers from each other. The highlight of the trip is the journey through one of the Neusiedlersee's many reed canals. For most passengers, the ferry trip comes to an end too soon. After just a few minutes, the jetty of Morbisha am See comes into view and we are once again on Austrian terrain. Morbisch am See dates back to the 5th century BC. Various archaeological finds show that both Celts and Romans also settled in this area. The name Morbisch appeared for the first time in the middle of the 13th century. Mainly due to various wars, the small, unfortified village repeatedly suffered due to its dependence upon Erdenberg that is situated 20 kilometers from here. Today, nothing remains of the destruction caused by the Turks. On the contrary, Mobisch enchants visitors with its impressive number of prettily decorated buildings and romantic alleys that are perfect for a relaxing stroll. In Morbish's ancient alleys, oleander is a popular floral decoration, and storks' nests adorn the roofs of its buildings. The Neusiedler Sea can become very windy, so it's a perfect El Dorado for both surfers and boatmen alike. The surface of the lake measures around 320 square kilometers. The mainly onshore wind and shallow waters of the lake are ideal for beginners who want to practice their various skills. The modern Morbisch Marina is very busy in summer during the tourist season, and it's often difficult to find an empty space. The calm looking conditions of the lake can be quite deceptive. The noise seedler can become hazardous. When the wind strength becomes more than force eight, the waves can be powerful and even skilled boatmen find it impossible to negotiate the lake. Fortunately, such strong winds are few and far between and occur only once or twice a year. Depending on the strength, direction and duration of the storm, the surface of the water can have a difference in level of up to 80 centimeters. But most of the time, the conditions on the Neusiedler Sea are suited to many kinds of water sports. So in summer, Moorbisch Marina is a busy place. The Bergenlandische town of Rust is one of the most famous in the region. Its imposing church tower and old town are not the only features of this charming town because Rust is also called the town of storks. 
Indeed, the stork population has become an integral part of the town. In summer, when the streets and squares of Roost are bathed in bright sunshine, it has an almost Mediterranean atmosphere. The many civic houses of the town centre that extend for around nine hectares mainly date back to the 16th and 19th centuries. The oldest and historically most important building in the picturesque old town is the Fischerkirche that was designed as a fortified church and was sited on the remains of a Roman watchtower. Today, all the buildings in Roost's old town are protected monuments. Therefore, its magnificent Baroque and Renaissance facades have been well preserved. Next to the Fischerkirche is Roost's classical church. Its tower is a marvellous sight. The architecture of the church is well worth seeing. It blends perfectly into the harmonic beauty of this historic town of storks. The interior of the church indicates the former wealth of Roost. The wealth of its citizens originated mainly from the wine trade. The local churches also profited from the town's prosperity. The economic success of this small town is also demonstrated by the huge dimensions of its main square and its beautifully designed buildings. The Freistadt Rust is not only a place of fine architecture and culture, its many storks give the town's chimneys extra special charm. When these large birds circle above the centuries-old rooftops of the old town or care for their young, it's easy to be captivated by this unusual town. The white stork, as to be found in Roost, normally nests on the same eyries each year. The eyries also serve as a mating place for the storks that return to the Neusiedler Sea from their winter hibernation south of the Sahara. And they live together here for one season. The welfare of the various stork families is dear to the heart of Roost's inhabitants. The birds are important symbols of the town and are also its unofficial heraldic bird. A few kilometers north of Roost is the charming village of Ogar. This settlement beside the Neusiedler Sea is also popular with sightseers. But as peaceful and tranquil as the village is today, it was once a hostile place. The Turkish wars of the 16th and 17th centuries took their toll here. Between the sieges of Vienna, frequent hostilities and plundering took place here. The Ogar War Memorial commemorates the victims of the Second World War. A characteristic of this area is its many old and nostalgic draw wells that are to be seen in the fields around the Neusiedler Sea. Ogar also became known as Austria's oldest red wine village. 
after drinking bowls from Roman times that contained traces of red wine were excavated here. The two kilometer long Ogawa wine trail was laid out amid the hilly wine growing area. It provides a fascinating insight into the history of the local vineyards. Purbach am See also has a long history. The origins of this settlement date back to the 6th century BC. Most of the buildings of the old town date back to the 17th century. Most notably, the Stiefelgasse contains a row of eye-catching buildings. An historic walk around Burbach usually begins at the Turk's Gate that is part of an old fortification complex. The complex was completed in 1634 but was unable to prevent further bloodshed. Such hostilities took place here until the 19th century. As in nearby Ogar, Burbach is also a wine growing area. Local families of wine growers go back many centuries. Numerous monuments such as the Marian and Plague Columns adorn the dreamy squares of this town that has a population of two and a half thousand. Surrounded by a mighty town wall and three fortified towers, Purbach has managed to retain its picturesque old town despite the ravages of war. Burbach is also a food lover's delight. In the numerous wine bars of this lovely town, there's a romantic and relaxed atmosphere. The Buschenschanken offers mainly young wines as well as Heuriger, and most of the inns feature many local dishes. Well worth a visit are the centuries-old wine cellars of Purbach's vineyards, interesting for both wine drinkers and non-wine drinkers alike. On the slopes of the Leithagerbergers, on the northeastern banks of the Neusiedler Sea, are the vineyards of the small village of Joas. In addition to its hilly location, mild climate and fertile soil, its mixture of primeval stone, lime and schist is responsible for the high quality of its wine. Today, the agricultural area around Joas measures 420 hectares. Due to the varied composition of the soil here, the work involved is quite demanding, but it makes for an even better wine. The grapes here are of the finest quality. In contrast to Joas, the village of Podersdorf with its parish church, the Heiligen Katharina, lies on the reed-free eastern banks of the Neusiedler Sea. Borisdorf was also badly damaged due to invasion by the Turks. So, over the years, its parish church has been the subject of much rebuilding work. Borisdorf's second most important building is its 15-meter-high windmill. It's the largest in Austria. Although it dates back to the first half of the 19th century, it's still in perfect condition and fully functional.
Burrisdorf's windmill once ground up to 300 kilograms of grist each day when conditions allowed. It's not only the past that is treasured here, the town's promenade shows its contemporary side. Bodersdorf's large public baths provide entertainment for the whole family. Here on the banks of the lake, it's fun and relaxation all the way. In the evening, various cafes and bars offer a pleasant way in which to sit back and enjoy the pleasures of life. Everyone's in holiday mood here. From the eastern banks of the lake, there's a good view of the sunset that's already painting the sky in dramatic colour. The 12 meter high lighthouse at the main entrance and in the center of the baths is another of Podersdorf's famous landmarks. The Neusiedler Sea Nature Park is not only great for water sports. For some years, the horse and carriage has been a popular way to get around. Due to much demand, there are various choices available. From small carriages that take just a couple of passengers to larger ones that take several. What could be more enjoyable than to explore the landscape around the Neusiedler Sea in this way? Just the clip-clop of hooves while you take in the sights. Around the lake, there are many scenic roads that can only be used by the horse-drawn carriages. The sightseers on this two-axle horse and carriage are in fine spirits and enjoying their journey while the horses walk at a slow pace. we enjoy the local scenery. In addition to the horse-drawn carriages, most of the local horse farms also provide riding facilities in those parts of the Neusiedler Sea that are not protected. In this area, the horse is a good way to get around. The rare albino donkey is also protected in this natural habitat. Yet some years ago, it was threatened by extinction. The striking albino donkeys were once bred by local farmers, but this eventually came to an end, until the administrators of the national park revived the tradition. They breed very well here, as is proven by the many young donkeys. The joie de vivre of the young white donkeys is a wonderful sight. Large reeded areas cover the shores of the Oberen Stinkersees that is situated in the Austrian part of the Neusiedler See Seewinkel National Park. They're an important habitat for both plants and animals. In the park's conservation areas, the natural reed landscape combines well with the local fauna. For biologists and ornithologists, the waters here are of great interest. But 
the watchtowers that were constructed for the observation of bird life provide a good view of the landscape as well as its natural inhabitants. Depending on the time of year, hundreds and sometimes even thousands of birds can be seen here, going about their daily business undisturbed. Numerous threatened and rare birds such as the curlew have found a home here in the Neusiedlersee National Park. As with the albino donkey, those who are responsible for the park are also looking after the interests of this creature, the Mangalisa pig. Until the 1950s, the Mangalisa pig was common in Hungary, but the eating of their meat became unfashionable, so their numbers drastically diminished. Fortunately, the extinction of these unusual creatures was prevented at the last moment, thanks to the park's breeding program. The Neusiedlersee's thickly coated Mangalisa pigs proliferate rapidly, as can be seen by the park's many cute piglets. The elements of various diverse landscapes, Alpine, Pannonic, Mediterranean and even Asian and Nordic influences are among the park's variety of flora and fauna. Even small creatures such as the butterfly can be observed from close quarters in the natural habitat of the Neusiedlersee. And the park's insects are an important source of nourishment for the local bird life. Numerous vantage points not only give a good view of the wildlife, but also of the amazing spectacle that takes place in the sky each evening. In the eastern part of the Neusiedler Sea, in the Seewinkel, close to the Austrian-Hungarian border, is the village of Ilmitz. Ilmitz has many important features. In this, the most extreme part of Austria, is the park's information center. Ilmitz also contains the most well-conserved farmhouse in the Seewinkel region, the Zverhof, with its pretty traditional thatched roof. In addition to the 250-year-old Zverhof, the village also has a number of other buildings with reed roofs. Today, reed has lost its popularity as a building material but many of the old buildings continue to retain their thatched roofs. The history of Ilmitz is closely associated with vineyards. These were first mentioned in 1598. In the middle of the 20th century, vine cultivation replaced traditional livestock farming and agriculture as the most important source of income in Ilmitz. Around 40% of this agricultural area is now taken up with vineyards. Yet it was only quite recently that the farms were small and family run. However, the vineyards have now been extended. Luckily, the quality of the wine has not suffered.
Wine connoisseurs from all over the world attest to Ilmitz's high quality wines. Indeed, as a result of its many prizes and awards, the land here has been described as having the soil of the world's master wines. Many of the vineyards provide information on their various wines. Close to the village is the Zietlaka that has a total surface area of three and a half square kilometers. Laken are typical of the Sivikul region. These tiny, shallow ponds have a high salt content. The panonic climate here stimulates the upsurge of soda from the depths of the earth. The Laken on the Neusiedler Sea are very popular with the many grey geese that can be seen here. One of the attractions here is the cute fledglings that waddle around in rather comical fashion. The young generally remain with their parents until the next breeding season. But even when new fledglings are born, the older ones stay close to their parents. The salty Laken, the Neusiedler Sea and its surrounding reed belt provides a unique habitat for much diverse wildlife. As the park lies at the junction of several climatic zones, numerous species of plant and wildlife are to be found here. Park also boasts the primeval Pratzewalski horse, the only subspecies of the wild horse still alive today. The breeding of these horses became necessary because in the middle of the 20th century their numbers were in severe decline and threatened by extinction. Due to various breeding initiatives, their numbers have since recovered, so the Pratzewalski horse is now flourishing once again and enjoying life to the full. The Neusiedler Sea, this magnificent Enderreg Lake, is one of the last large natural paradises in Central Europe. Despite human habitation on the shores of the lake, this region has been well protected. The beauty of the landscape, the incredible variety of flora and fauna, and the fascinating history of its towns and villages. All these factors leave an indelible impression of Austria's Neusiedler Sea.